Uh, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the Tanner's restaurant for people that perhaps haven't been here, uh, how long it's been open, etc. Yeah, Tanner's, uh, as we, we opened Tanner's on July the 17th, 1999. Um, so we're just over eight years, which is celebrating our eighth birthday at Tanner's. Um, quite a significant change from all those years ago. This, obviously, uh, before there was just myself and James in the kitchen and uh, two uh, guys that worked out front for us. Between the two sites now, with Tanner's and our brasserie, uh, the Barbican Kitchen, we're up 55 staff, so things have changed somewhat. Um, Tanner's obviously is uh, more of a, a, a fine dining uh, establishment. Um, you know, we're housed in Plymouth's oldest building in the Preston House. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic site, and um, obviously to get this award now for for what we've what we've achieved is um, is, is just absolutely fantastic. We're extremely pleased. I understand you're going to uh, show us some of your cooking techniques. Uh, what are you going to uh, prepare for us? Right. Okay, well, we've got um, some wonderful ingredients right in front of us here. Um, we've got some lovely Girol mushrooms, which are uh, beautiful, got a lovely nuttiness to them. This is a uh, purple cress. Now, this is part of the uh, cress stroke basil family, so it's got a beautiful, prefer perfumey kind of taste to it. Um, here, we've got some uh, local grill fillet. This came off the boat straight into Plymouth um, Harbour, and that would have come in in the morning. We prepared it, we've made a sauce out of the skin and out of the bones and we really are you know, up on using all of, the, um, all of the animal, you know, whether it's meat or fish. This is the sauce base, which is part fish from the bones and also part beef, believe it or not. It sounds a bit weird, but the meatiness works really well with the mushroom. To fish off, we've got pod mushroom mashed potatoes anywhere I've described. Put for a potato or rice and see it only lumped, it's really, really nice and fine. A bit of a production there as well. Um, touch of seasoning in there and then add richness to it. The secret is drop in a couple of egg yolks as well and it gets this wonderful richness, wonderful glossiness. Now as you can see there's only a certain few elements to this dish but it's kind of our cooking style really because the simplicity of this dish lets the ingredients speak for themselves and I think that's the most important thing. Um, of course you've got to make your food look good I suppose but the most important thing is what it tastes like. And um, I've uh, got everything ready to go. You can see how quickly this is produced. Obviously, we've got the sauce done and a bit of mash, and I'm going to start putting this together over at the stoves. Right, OK. Right, so to start off, really, really simple. Hot pans on the stove top. Here, we just put the uh, mushrooms into the pan, and the idea is you want to cook them down just ever so slightly. Um, too, too, too hot and too long, and it's going to turn to mush, and you really, really don't want that. So a quick, hot saute in there, a touch of seasoning, only a bit, and then the good secret is as well to finish it with mushrooms. It sounds a bit strange, and not everyone would do it, but this really brings out a nice nuttiness to them. It's the addition of a little bit of lemon juice, okay, just at the end. If I put that in at the beginning, it's going to turn it bitter. So we just deglaze the pan with the lemon juice, and we just leave these just to stay warm at the side. Notice that we strain everything so we take off any excess fat, any excess oil. With regards to the fish here, hot nonstick pan straight on the stove top. A splash of olive oil, only, only a splash. And here we go with that wonderful grill fillet. And I'm going to put it away from myself so it doesn't splash back and you don't burn yourself. Use this principle whenever you're cooking at home on your stove top, or it's meat, fish, or whatever, really. Really important. And there we go. We just leave that to cook through. Now, a lot of people with fish think you've got to cook it, cook it, and cook it. The secret is with fish, it takes minutes. So, a couple of minutes both sides. Finish it with a little bit of lemon. The sauce is um, just coming up to fall now. Chris has got the mash on the go. And we're just going to finish things off. Again, tiny, tiny bit of seasoning in with the mash and into the sauce. The fish, you notice I'm not shaking the pan around at all. I'm just letting the natural heat of the pan sear it. And the idea is with that, if you, you keep um, constant heat there, you get a nice bit of coloration on the fish. Also, we can see it literally start to change color and cook through. Um, where my finger is now, if I just pull that back, you see how the fish is now going from opaque to white. We can see that the heat now is coming through. At this stage, we know that the fish is almost halfway cooked. And all we do is next, is grab ourselves a slice, a spatula or a spoon would do, lift up the fish, turn it over and we get this ever so slight coloration, which is exactly what we want. Again, same principle as before, leave the fish just to cook through. The pan is not in the centre of the stove, it was, if it was in the centre of the stove, you would find that the outside of the fish would sear, it will become terribly tough and it will be raw in the middle. So you want a medium heat to give you a great medium cooking temperature. So the heat of the pan rises right through the fish. Hence why we just leave it at the edge of the stove, but we have the pan hot, 
before we put the fish in. Do not do it from cold, okay? It's very, very important. So we've got the mushrooms keeping warm, the sauce is heating up. Chris has just added a knob of butter to the sauce now. The idea with that is, is it's called uh, Monteo Beurre. It gives the sauce richness, it gives it a really, really nice gloss, and it gives it an added depth, colour, and texture on your palate as you eat it. And um, all you do is knob of unsalted butter at the end. Use unsalted butter in your cookery because if you do use seasoning in your cookery, which a lot of people obviously do, and you use salted butter, it could completely readjust your sauce and make it too harsh, too strong. So just a little tip, okay? Or if you are going to use salted butter and it's all you've got to hand in your fridge, then by all means put that in first and then taste the seasoning at the end to see if you need to adjust it. Um, but obviously at the restaurant we have blocks and blocks of butter and we go unsalted all the way, only in our cooking. Now, back to the fish, almost there. We're just going to check to see the coloration's coming good. Notice the fish is just starting to spring back and that way we know that it's just about cooked through. If not, you can serve it ever so slightly underdone. If you um, cook fish at home and you see that there's white globules coming out, you want to lose the protein. That's the most moist piece of fish, delicate flavour part as you eat it. So I've got myself, and that obviously a uh, bit of kitchen towel roll would be pretty fine. And again, lemon oil this is that I'm putting on there. Now I'll give it a taste and let this flavour Take the fish from the pan, and now we can set up the dish. So we can get it all together. Hello, okay. Junior Bread, Tutorial, coffee, white roast salmon. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, what are you ready? Okay, right, so we're going to sit the, the fish on the uh, on the, on the pommel saline on the mashed potato. So, we, okay, so it goes into the pipe in there. Okay, take that down, and we're just going to cut the end of that off. You don't need a nozzle for this, okay? Be careful, obviously, because the potato is still quite hot. Then, Right in the middle of the plate. Mashed potato. Okay. We're going to sit the, sit the fish right there. Simple as that. Yeah, the deflect rather than actually taking it out with a spoon. Presentation is awesome as well. But as James explained, very, very simple elements to this dish. They're all complementary really well. Okay, onto the fish. Take the fish. We can just sit it. It's not falling apart on us. And oops. It's just about cooked, which is exactly what we want. Now, next up, we've got the wonderful nutty Chiron Nutter, which is brilliant, um, especially the time of year as well, and in season, which is more important. So you can get them at a good price, and you can get them good, and you'll really, really get one good flavour. Now, over to the rest of the dip. Chirols just scattered around. We've got some purple cress. I've also got a few chives here as well. This is a chive member of the onion family. That little onion here, if you eat it, that commences the wonderful purple cress with the basil taste. Over to that lovely, rich, glossy sauce. Of the heat, you don't say boiling and too hot, and literally it's so so simple. You just a slight drizzle around the plate, and only a little bit on the fish. We're going to finish it off with a scattering crisp. I'm not putting any dressings on it or anything else because I really want basilic flavour to come through and just to finish things up. A bit of taste as well. Got some chive snippets which we can just. Scatter around, and yeah, of course, it helps with color as well with regards to present. But more importantly, it's fine. Like, and there you have it a simple seasonal dish that's your roll mushrooms, sauteed brill fillet, pom saline, purple basil, chives, and a fish and beef stock reduction sauce. Simplicity on plate, maximum flavor, and that's what you're after.